I know you are already be praying, praying in your prayer for black life in this country. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Pray about that. Uh, so about I'm talking about it. Listening to the news today, and uh, John Legend he sent a truck around with food balls for the protesters. I forgot where it was. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't know if it was in his community or his. Yeah, he lives. Yeah. But he sent a, a truck of food for the people. All right, then. Shout out to John Legend. Okay. And y'all been seeing these uh, athletes who've been wearing these shirts before the game. I can't breathe. Can't breathe. Yeah. So we're glad that that some of our. Um, Athletes and entertainers are conscious enough to make a statement. Uh, I can't say I'm thoroughly impressed, uh, but it is, you know, it, it ain't Muhammad Ali saying, I ain't fighting in the war even if that means I gotta go to jail and lose my title, but at least it is somebody making a public statement saying, hey, you know, I'm bringing some, raising some awareness. If, if they wanna impress me, which they don't have to, but what I would be impressed by is if, huh? Dollars, well, or, or even this. Dollars, of course, but in a sense, when you're a millionaire, giving money don't always impress me. Uh, Jay-Z said around the time of Hurricane Katrina, sure, I ponied up a meal, but I didn't give my time. So in reality, I didn't give a dime or a damn. I just put my money in the hands of the same people who left my people stranded, left them folks abandoned. Damn, the money that I gave was just a band-aid. So I ain't always impressed with millionaires giving money. Here's what would impress me. If at the jump ball, do y'all know what die-ins are? So this is what they've been doing in, in solidarity all around. People just lay out, lay out like they are dead, right? right. And, and, and purpose of doing that is supposed to say, you know, the black life matters and that black life is being slaughtered. If somebody right at the jump ball, Derrick Rose, LeBron James, you know, uh, 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 Stephen Curry, right? Soon as the jump, so you're out there with your I Can't Breathe shirt on, right? And then, you know, you get, I, matter of fact, I hope one of y'all watched this. And, uh, you know, I hope you get an idea from this. We'll be praying for you. Uh, soon as the jump ball go off, they just die out, right? You know, die in right there on the, on the floor for four, what, four, four and a half minutes? Ain't that the thing that people been doing in honor of Mike Brown? Four and a half minutes. Make all the trainers and stuff run out there. I don't know what's going on. Then at the end, just get up and say, I just wanted to bring some awareness to <laughs> the cause of black life, right? I'm sure Adam, Adam Silver, everybody have a fit. You know, they may be fine. You know, pay your $25,000. Yeah. That right there, yeah. Yeah. that would shock me. Yeah. I, I come here Sunday. I probably wouldn't even preach. I say, I just want y'all to look at this. <laughs> this is what the Spirit of the Lord is doing. But uh, again, anybody, you know, to, uh, to your point, Ray, just for people to know about what's going on is important. And, uh, in all the ways that we can get involved, in all the ways that we can combat some of this craziness, and let's do it. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the gift of life today. We even thank you for the burden of responsibility that comes with it. So we stand here in solidarity with all of those who affirm life especially those who affirm black life. We think of the Hobson family and other families that are disrupted by sickness and by bereavement. We think of Sister Easter Jackson and the Jackson family. We think of Sister Jennifer Plasky and her family. We think of families whose names we don't know, but whose stories are very common. That too often we are neglected, pushed to the margins, exploited, and oppressed. So as we gather here today, God, it is not about form or fashion. We want to know what your will is for us today. We want to know where you would have us to go what you would have us to do, and who you would have us to be. So in the moments that we share together, gird us up and equip us, give us your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light into our pathway, and teach us how to take it into the dark places. 
so that the world can be better than it was when it found us. We pray this in the name of a loving God who can do all things and all things well. Amen. All right, so last week uh, we started this series, at least that's what I want to call it, a teacher series on Black Lives Matter and the birth of Black Jesus. So we spent a lot of time last week on this um, handout that gives a history of the Black Lives Matter movement. So I know some of y'all have missed that. I didn't do copies today because I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it today. Um, but somebody, and whoever it was, I want to thank them, hung copies up in the hallway, right outside the bathrooms, so you can look on that bulletin board and you can see it. If you need a copy, let me know. But that's part of what we're doing as a ministry, as a congregation, is standing in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. A lot of people are claiming to do that, but they don't necessarily know the history of the movement. So that's what I was trying to spend some time doing last week. Uh, also, that's why many of us wore uh, black this past Sunday. Thank y'all so much. What would be great is if everybody would get their African garb because Pastor Earl wears his every, sec every second Sunday. And this is the second Sunday, and so I'll be in my African garb because I'm pastor of Abyssinian Missionary Baptist Church, and we have Afrocentric roots. Just thought I'd put that out there. Uh, now, don't go broke trying to get it. Matter of fact, but if you don't have one, what you do is you talk to your family and say, you know what I want for Christmas? Why don't you go out and get me some African garb so on second Sundays I can wear it. And then don't be talking about pastor, I ain't got that many because I don't have that many. You know, y'all see me in the same two or three, right? So if y'all want to bless me, never mind. Uh, <laughs> no, seriously, uh, we stand in solidarity with that movement. Uh, congregations all over the country this upcoming Sunday are supposed to be doing some of what we did last Sunday. Uh, not only are congregations wearing black, some congregations are protesting and marching throughout their uh, communities and neighborhoods after service. So it's just an idea. But above all, I wanted us to spend some time uh, talking about uh, Black Lives Matter within the context of the birth of Jesus. So remember last week, we started by looking at Matthew chapter 1. Let's look at it again. And in Matthew chapter 1, in the first chapter, in the first, I think it's 18 verses or so, 17 verses, we have a genealogy. Anybody remember what a genealogy is? Like a family tree, right? Uh, Y'all know most of us cannot trace our family tree with a lot of detail. So you don't always know every family member, even if you love them, right? You can't just, now some of y'all don't love y'all family. I'm praying for y'all in that regard, but, uh, well, you love your family, you just don't love all your family members. Um, so I'm praying for you because that's sometimes how people get left out of the family tree. Cousin so-and-so be with it, so I ain't putting them in there. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes the families are so large that you just can't keep up with everybody. So what you have here in Matthew chapter 1, like we were looking at last week, is genealogy of Jesus' family tree or ancestry that connects him to some special and significant people within the tradition of what comes to be known as the children of Israel. So, get a record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, right? Yeah, Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, so on and so forth. And you see a lot of these familiar names, like in verse 6, you see Jesse, the father of King David. How many people familiar with this story about when David is quote unquote anointed? that this uh, prophet comes to the house and has some oil to anoint the next king. We'll talk about that in a minute. And Jesse has 12 sons and he tries to pour some anointing oil from this flask on all of them. That's supposed to be the sign of whoever the next king is going to be. And it never comes out. He got 11 sons in the living room. And then so the prophet says to Jesse, these are all your sons? And just like, no, I mean, I got this one little ruddy shepherd boy out there in the field working. He said, well, tell him to come here. And then that's 
actually how King David ends up being uh, anointed and is set to become the king of Israel. So that's what, that's what you have. Jesse, the father of King David. You have David's son, Solomon. And you see some other people who are, who are familiar. But you don't see everybody, right? And last week, what I was trying to deal with is what I called the social setting. The social setting for Jesus' birth. That Jesus is born in a into a particular community. That community has a particular ancestry or heritage. But you don't see a ethnicity. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So you got society. Within a society, certain people become associated with certain places. And within the, that place, they form a culture or a ethnic group. Y'all following me so far? Any questions? Anybody Anybody not, not grasping it yet? I want y'all to really get this part. I'm describing the social setting that Jesus is birthed into. And this is part of what Matthew is describing. Not just the ancestry, but the ethnic history and in part a social history. These Jesus folks, okay? And what I did last week was build us up from these uh, more famous and recognizable names, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that sort of stuff, until an ethnicity gets connected to it. When in Genesis, you don't have to turn there, but in Genesis chapter 14, verse 13, this is where if you weren't here last week, you should have something to write with, and you would write down Genesis chapter 14, verse 13, and then go double check when you get home saying, oh, that's what it says. I'm just going to tell you now, but I could lead you wrong if you don't take your own notes and do your own work. Matter of fact, New Testament says, study to show yourself approved. Who is yourself? You, not me. Okay. Genesis chapter 14, verse 13, Abram, whose name becomes Abraham, is identified as a Hebrew. That's where we get ethnicity. Right? So Jesus' ethnicity is rooted in the Hebrew culture, the Hebrew tradition, the Hebrew people. Let me give you today where the Hebrew people become the people of Israel. Y'all following me? Any questions up to this point? Y'all with it? Okay, so let's go to Genesis chapter 33. Still dealing with the social set. Let me rephrase that. This is Genesis chapter 32. Okay? Genesis chapter 32. Page 53 if you're in the Brown Bible. And somebody start reading at verse 22. Then Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maid servants, and his two, and his eleven sons across the border of the Jabbok. Jabbok. Okay, so you see Jacob, right? Y'all remember in Matthew chapter 1, it said Abraham, Isaac, and who? Jacob. And Jacob. Okay, so this is Jacob right here. So this is one of Jesus' ancestors, right? Y'all got that? If you don't, if you don't, just when you get a chance, check back in Matthew chapter one. You'll see, you'll see the name. This is this is it. So keep going, Z. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Okay. In other translations, it may not say a man. It may say an angel. Does anybody have a translation that says a angel wrestled with him? Anybody? Nobody? Anybody got King James? What King James say? Says a man? Says a man? Does it always say a man? It says. No, I mean, I'm going to leave you if you, t if you tell me. Okay, well, let's keep reading. So 25. Yeah. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 24. 24? Yeah. So Jacob was. Oh, you can write it up. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he took the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was ripped. Rich, rich, as he wrestled with the man. 
Okay. And the man said. Hold on, just a second. John, John. I'm in Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Hey, y'all do me a favor. If I say something and, and y'all see me going ahead and you ain't where we are, say, Pastor, you know, hold up for a second. Yeah. I did say 33 at first. I meant to, I meant to say 32. Sorry about that. Everybody there? Chapter 32, verse 25. And since I don't want Z to have to say wrenched again, we're going to say verse 26. <laughs> Everybody there? If you need a minute, say I need a minute. Okay, that's what you call holy quietness right there. Okay, go ahead, Z. Then the man said, let me go for it. It is daybreak. Uh-huh. But Jacob replies, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Uh-huh. The man asked him, what is your name? Uh-huh. Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Okay, so what just happened right there? Changed his name, right? So this man, which other people would translate angel or some figure to the point where he said, if, if I'm wrestling with a man, and then the man I'm wrestling with says, you wrestled with man and with God, then some say, hey, this must be a representative of God, this must be an angel. But ultimately, the name is changed, and the name is changed from Jacob to Israel. Israel, okay? So if Abraham is a Hebrew, Abraham has a son named Isaac, Isaac has a son named Jacob, what is Jacob? He's a Hebrew, right? Jacob gets his name changed from Jacob to Israel. John. Reference what? The Hebrew? Yeah, I mean I mean you see it a lot from this point. Yeah, yeah, I mean I mean you see it you see it a lot from this point because if y'all don't have this, please make sure you have this. Don't let me go any further till you get this part. In those days, names were not only names of individuals, there were also names of Geographical locations. Okay? Y'all got that? So Israel here becomes Jacob's name. It also will end up becoming a geographical location. Because Jacob's offspring will be called, guess what? Israel. Israelites. Y'all see that? So at some point, Jacob is going to have some sons. Yeah, but for some reason, I'm glad you brought that up because he does have daughters, but they don't follow what you would call, man, if I was you, I'd be writing down all day. Uh, <laughs> they don't follow what we follow in the 21st century. In the 21st century, nobody has to take a maternity test, right? That's when you follow the lineage of the mother, maternal lineage. So grandmama, mama and them, big mama, that's usually the matriarch of the family. In the 21st century, we follow a matrilineal lineage. Why? Because you don't have to wonder who the mommy is. Whoever end up with the bump. Yeah. They, they don't really put right. In the, in, in the biblical sense. sense, they don't follow the matrilineal lineage. Listen to me closely. They follow the patrilineal lineage, which is why we take paternity tests, right, to figure out who the dad is, because you could be fooled. You know for sure who the mommy is, whoever got the bump. Who the daddy is ain't always certain. But if it, it, yeah, <laughs> Rem Kim said, mama's baby, papa's maybe, right? Um if you if you look back at Matthew chapter one more closely, what you see is every now and then it shifts from following the man to follow a woman every now and then. And so it's matrilineal by convenience. I don't have the time to talk about a whole lot of that, but write that down, and if we ever get a chance to come back to it, I'll come back to it. But it's patrilineal in the Bible, except for by convenience. Then they'll include the, the daughter, right, or something. John, you say you had another question. Okay, see, like, what I was asking, in chapter 33, right. they still refer to him as Jacob. That's right. And on the in other chapters, they still refer to him as Israel. Right. And they still refer to him as Israel. Yes. Yes, and, and, and as it continues to go, Jacob is used less and Israel is used more because it's not simply him, it's the location too, all right? Now, I don't have the detail, but this one at first, is, you know. You don't want to know if the Bible it does. Yep. 
Look, look. Watch this. Yeah. It's referencing him as Israel right now. Right. Yeah. Right. In 33. Yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yes. That does. But I'm doing all of this to describe the the social setting for Jesus' birth. Jesus is born into a society of Hebrew people. Okay. So when we're reading the Bible, the Bible is a set of writings about Hebrew people. Y'all following that? The primary characters are who? Hebrews. The Hebrews. There are other characters. There are other groups. There are other social groups and ethnic groups, but they're not the primary characters. Okay? So for instance, if I have time, which I don't, I've done this before, but and maybe I'll do it again. Genesis chapter 4 is very interesting because you have Cain, Abel, Adam, Eve. Cain kills Abel, which if you're reading closely, it seems like the only people left in the world are Adam, Eve, and Cain. But later on, Cain <laughs> ends up in a land called Nod, and the text says he found a wife. Which means it's, it's clear to the people writing the story that there are other people other than just Adam and Eve and their family, but we're focused in on that family because they're the main characters. When somebody else from outside of the Hebrew society comes into the picture, it's usually to advance a, a broader story. They're not the main characters. If I ask y'all right now what Cain's wife name is, what, guess what? Yeah, can't nobody answer. You know what? I can't even answer. You know what? You know what he said? She's not Hebrew. She's probably Exactly. E exactly. And, and she may have been Hebrew, like distant or something like that. And I'll talk about that in a second when I get to the Egyptian and uh, Hebrew connection. Everybody following this so far? Look like it. Y'all ain't fooling me, are y'all? Don't let me go no further if you don't have it. Ask your question. Any questions? We good? Okay. So, Bible is written about Hebrews. And it is describing the Hebrews' struggle to receive the fulfillment of God's covenantal promise given to Abraham. I think we looked at this last week when God says to Abraham, I will make of you a great nation. So the association with Israel, not just Jacob, but the people of Israel, and Hebrews being referred to as Israelites, is the byproduct of a Hebrew named Jacob, being renamed Israel. By the time we get to the New Testament, there's going to be a new term that refers to Hebrews and Israelites. Y'all do know Hebrews, Israelites, same people, right? Why? Because Jacob. Got it. By the time we get to the New Testament, there's a new term. It's called Jew. This term is of uncertain origin. People don't really know where. I'm talking about people who know Greek language, right? Uh, some of my professors and some of my colleagues, they will say that the term is of uncertain origin, but some associate, associate the term with the Israelites or the Hebrews who were living in a place called Judea. Okay? That's not as important as some of the other stuff, but I did want to point that out. So by the time you get to the New Testament, when it says Jew, Jew is synonymous with Israelite. Israelite is synonymous with Hebrew. So you hear me a lot of times just saying Hebrew people. I'm trying to point back to the original people. So what, I'm, what I just did, or at least what I hope I did, was put the Bible into a historical, social, literary context. Historical, history, we're looking back in history. Social, I'm telling you about the social setting. And literary, the words of the Bible say thus and so. That's the context. The Bible provides us with a social setting, which is the journey of the Hebrew people or the Hebrew society as it relates to their religious history. It's their struggle to walk with God as a covenant people. God makes this covenant promise to Abraham, all of his offspring, right? So that's what we see. That's what the Bible is in the social context. So Jesus and his birth becomes to a degree, a continuation of the Hebrew people and their struggle to walk with God as covenant people. 
Any questions on the social setting? Go on once. Go on twice. All right. Now I want us to move from the social setting to the political setting. How many people know what the term? Sure. Yeah. I'm not sure, right? Because I said that the term is of uncertain origin. So nobody, people who study this stuff, nobody has really been able to persuasively point to one instance or one time period and say, you know, in 45 BC, that's when they start calling them Jews, right? Uh, would they be basically their offspring? They are. I mean, I mean, now they trace. We could tell from the literature, biblical literature, that they trace Jews to the Israelites, right? If they trace the Jews to the Israelites, the children of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. Then we know that the children of Israel were Hebrews. So I use the terms interchangeably, Jew, Israelite, Hebrew. I like to stick with Hebrew a little bit more. And I'll tell you why I'm second. Any, but great question. Any other questions? John? There was a time when they said the Jews didn't believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, were they still Israelites if they didn't believe in Jesus? Correct. Maybe that's when they changed. No. The yes and no. No, no, that's not when they start calling the Jews. Okay? That's Jesus true. was a Jew. Right? Or Hebrew. Right. right. Mm -hmm. The Orthodox Jews. This term, you know, and, I, and uh, one of my uh, students out here uh, from my, my class that I teach in world religions, and they'll tell you, I say this, uh, they didn't believe in Jesus. I mean, it's like saying, you know, I don't believe in Santa Claus, right? That's not what it is when you talk about Jews and Jesus. The Orthodox Jews, they know that there is a historical figure, Jesus of Nazareth. That's not disputable. They don't subscribe to Jesus being what we'll talk about next week, the Messiah, right? They, they would align Jesus with Elijah, with Jeremiah, with Moses, right? Yeah, yeah, right? But they're basically connected in a sense. How can you be a part and you think of... They affirm that Jesus is... Uh, one, one of my good colleagues around here, uh, he's the... Rabbi of Temple Israel, Micah Greenstein. Anybody heard that name before? Yeah, I'm not, yeah. yeah right. Uh, he would say, uh, so Brother Earl is going to talk about the religion founded by Jesus, Christianity. I'm going to talk about, Rabbi Greenstein, say, I'm going to talk about the religion Jesus practiced, Judaism. I got that? Judaism is a religious, some believe, religious, ethnic, cultural uh, set of rituals and practices of the Jewish people, they, you know, Jewish like they ain't real thing, but Jewish, Israelite, Hebrew people. Y'all following that? So again, that, that I mean, that's the social that that's the social context, social context, the society, the neighborhood, the, the group, the ethnic group, right? Jesus, Hebrew. Now I want to talk about the political setting in which Jesus is birthed, because Jesus is not only birthed in a social setting. In a neighborhood with a particular community and an ethnic, cultural heritage and tradition, he's also birthed, and this is what most of us miss, in a political setting. And the political setting that Jesus is born into does not begin when Jesus is born. Matthew chapter 2. Now notice the birth of Jesus in Matthew is verses 18 through 24. I skipped that. We'll come back to it. I'm still describing the context. Somebody read Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. That's good, right there. Y'all hear that? Okay, this is what some of y'all did, so let me say this again. Y'all let me go ahead of y'all. 
If I said, let's go, and you ain't in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, be like, Rev, hold on for a second. Okay? How many people missed it when she just read? Raise your hand. Okay. Amen. Matthew chapter 2, Brown Bible, page 1497. On your app, it's M-A-T-T. -T. Number 2 come after number 1 and before number 3. Looks like the upside down, backwards 5. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with <laughs> Matthew chapter 2. I'm asking her to read the first verse, and we're discussing now not just the social setting, but the what? But the political setting. Okay. Everybody ready? If you need a minute, say, Rev, I need a second. Okay. Go ahead, Sister Jim. <clears throat> Good. Came to Jerusalem. Good. Just, just the first verse. Y'all see that there's a reference to a king, right? King's name is Herod. Okay. That says something about the political setting. But before we can understand this political setting that Jesus is born into, Jesus's political setting does not begin when he's born. It's already going on before he's born. And it's connected to a broader biblical context. So not only does the Bible provide us with a social setting and social context, it also provides for us, sometimes more explicitly than others, a political context. Regarding the political context of the biblical narrative, there are at least two major misunderstandings as it relates to the ancient Hebrews. There's at least two major misunderstandings as it relates to the ancient Hebrews. This is why people don't catch the political set. Here's the first major misunderstanding. Most people don't understand that the ancient Hebrews were akin, related to, arguably something similar to cousins of, the ancient Egyptian people. Y'all following me? Why just say? Okay, so there's some relationship, some ethnic, some cultural, some you know, arguably blood type relationship between the Hebrews and the Egyptians. Let me try to see if I can make it plain for you. Yes. Like, like, okay. The difference between the Hebrews and the Egyptians is not ethnicity per se. And I'll show you in a second. It's class. Egyptians would be the high class Hebrew. And the Hebrews would be the low-class Egyptians. Y'all following that? Yeah. So yeah. So it's part. I mean, it's part of it. It's part of it. So the Hebrews, right, are related to the Egyptians. It's not that they're a different ethnic group per se. They're a different class, economic class. I'm gonna show you in a second. Y'all have to take my word for it. Just hear me. I'm trying to explain it now. Then I'll take you to some text to try to support what I'm trying to explain. So the Egyptians would be like high class. Did I say bougie Hebrews? And the Hebrews would be like low, cat, low class, or did I say ratchet Egypt, Egyptians? Y'all following it now? Huh? Yeah. I mean, it's the same group, just like you got. In the African American community today, some people in the upper class and some people in the lower class, and if you're not careful, you would think they're not in the same ethnic group. Right? Um, Texas, somewhere, that's where uh, he and I think uh, Abram negotiate land and stuff. No, they negotiated before they left. Uh -huh. That's when he went to Sodom. Okay. 
and then after he went to Solomon, he left because of the burning. Yeah. Not not well, sure. Well, not him and his wife, just him, because his wife came there. But um, what, what, the reason I'm asking is because uh, when you were talking about how the Egyptians and the uh, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews yeah. had to have a blood relationship, uh-huh. then Lot had to start something. There right. was no mention of the Egyptians made before him. Uh, Abraham yeah, and, and and I'm almost sure that you okay, find Abraham. some Egyptian references in some of the gene- genealogies. Okay. Even if it doesn't say Egypt, it says stuff like Cush. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, put P U T. Yeah. Right. So all of these people, but okay. right. there is, but 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 there's a broader point I'm trying to make about ethnicity, even if it ain't about bloodline. Because I'm trying to here's here's my strongest argument I'm trying to make trying to make it last week trying to make it this week 